All right, it's day three. It's, well, yes, day three has been about, what, three, four days since our last follow-up. So the third follow-up. Yep. It's been a little over a week since I literally hurt my back from bending over to putt, which is pretty sad. So, Makes me laugh still. I know. I know. Um, so update. Uh, we'll give you, uh, I'm doing very well. So Mitch will ask me some specific questions. We'll retest some things and then we'll go over prophylaxis, which basically means how do we maintain this or take care of myself so I don't end up back here again. Well, I'll be here, but I don't end up back into this, the position I was, um, you know, in a matter of days, weeks, or months. I can kind of, you know, keep myself doing well moving forward. Well, since I work with you, I've been in the, the loop a little bit more than I would with a usual patient. But yeah. we'll just start with the basics, ask him some questions, and just see how his movements are doing. So, how have symptoms been since our follow-up? Way better. Way, Way better. better. Yeah, I felt like a couple days ago we got, sort of got over the hump where uh, Dr. Israel was doing some more, most mobilizations on me periodically in between patients, maybe what, two, two maybe three times a day, most like two yeah. times a day. And it, that really, really helped me because it helped me get over that kind of uh, stuck yeah. hump there. And I've been able to progress that at home and I've been hanging out in my forearms when doing some work, uh, using a lumbar roll, actually walking around with it. Where's your lumbar roll? Oh, there it is. Oh. I'm actually walking around with it at home, like a fanny pack. My wife's making fun of me, but hey, what, what, that's what you do for it recovery. Works. Yeah, Quick right? recovery too, That we have to right? worry about, it's just there. So whenever I sit down, wherever it may be, it's there. So all those things have helped significantly. Good. So it sounds like frequencies way down. Frequencies, frequencies down. I, mean, I still feel it. Mornings are a little bit worse, but right. way more tolerable. I'm still wearing my lumbar roll at night. I like it. it helps. Um, intensity, way down. Yeah. Near the end of the day, like frequency is almost not there. It's way better. Yep. And then I, just seeing you every day, I can tell his range of motion and his posture is a little bit better. <laughs> You he see me kinda, walking down the hall, and yeah. look like there's a he was kind of up my arse. I mean, I see it because I work with him every day, but he was in this kind of stuck posture and that anterior pelvic tilt. Hilarious for me to, to see from the outside, but luckily I've noticed that posture is not as antalgic. And then I'm guessing your function's better because I know he's golfed since the last time I saw him. Yeah, function's way better. And I haven't been carrying the double strap where it tends to make me lean forward. I've been using just the one strap so Good. I can stay more upright. Yep. I've been in the morning, I'll do some of my press ups or hang out there for a little bit uh, before I even went out on the course. I extra made sure that I was uh, taking care of myself there. So doing all the little things obviously to get better, I think, but the most important part at this point is to make sure I maintain it and don't just forget about it because I feel good. Right. Um, also, lastly, I still have some tension in that right leg. So if I go down, I feel it more on the right leg for sure, especially in the morning. Mm -hmm. That's getting better. But in the evening, uh, if I do some mobility drills, I can really open that up. Okay. So. Yeah. So, well, let's just get into seeing how his baseline tests are, okay. his movements. Yeah. So let's go ahead. You already just did it, but let me see it. Show the people. Right there. That's good. Right here, it's a little tighter on the right. Like yeah, you said, and right it, now it's just tight hamstrings. I actually did some, a, a light workout with a lot of uh, RDLs and slow and controlled squats and all that. So hum, nice humble brag. Ooh, savage. At the end, right there, I like it. <laughs> okay, let's bring it back. Oh, didn't even hesitate. Yeah, no problem at all. Limbo champ. All right, go ahead and rotate. No problem there. And, and then this, these were an issue. Anyway. Those hips don't lie. They don't. Okay. All right, last thing we did. Um, the, la or the last couple of visits, we've checked his overpressure tolerance, so we'll just start there, all right? Go ahead and start flat for me first. Okay. Oh, freebie. <laughs> and then just f from my uh, point of view, his musculature is just so much easier to, you know, palpate into or press into. Doesn't feel like a block of wood right here, okay? All right, how's that feel? Good, a little more sensitive on the right, but like barely. Okay, and then this was the spot. Totally fine. Maybe a little bit more sensitive in the right, but again, very minimal. And then, Emily, I don't know if you can tell, but I'm on my tippy toes. I have almost my full body weight into there, so that's a really good sign that you can tolerate that, okay? Yeah, if anything, the main thing I'm focused on is my, um, 
probably my inferior vena cave or my <laughs> descending aorta down here. I can feel boom, 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 yes. repressing into there. So that's probably the biggest. We didn't thing. want to do that after a fresh meal. That's for sure. No, no, no. So. Yeah. Um, anyway, good to go. Typically at this point, we would check for if the scab has healed, meaning that let's do a lot of flexion to tease this out and make sure we're good to go. And we're not just, you know, thinking we're good because we feel good. And then we end up going out and breaking the scab. Right. It's been long enough where I feel it's okay. And I've actually tested flexion on my own. So we're not going to waste your time doing that. But we would do a bunch of toe touches, even with some weight to really uh, test the tissues back here and make sure it's stable and we're not flaring up anything or causing any more stiffness. Right, and if you were an actual one of my patients, then we would address more of that right-sided tightness, especially tension, with that, yeah. that nerve tension yep. on that right side. But I know he already knows the strategies and I'm sure he's doing a lot. Yeah, and we want to keep this simple. We'd also go through core stability during this time and teaching people how to move better. The core ABCs, we call it, mm -hmm. using breathing for stability. But I already know all those things. I just got not be lazy about doing my stuff. Yeah. So I've been doing all that and I'm going to keep working on the tension and core stability. Mm -hmm. But for uh, um, simple simplicity purposes, let's to recap, we did all this without adjusting. He yes. did not adjust me, crack and twist and all that stuff. We just went with the straight on mobilizations there. What you saw here is what we did the entire time. Right. And then my home strategies, that combination, it's simple but effective. And it's the little details that matter with the assessment. Mm -hmm. So it's not about pressing buttons, about pressing the right bus, bu pressing the right buttons at the right time, and it changes as you go along. Well, and one important thing to see is the people were able to follow us through kind of a three visit series. I mean, it's very short window, but if you were one of my patients, I didn't have to sign you up for three times a week for three straight months just because you threw your back out over the weekend, so. No, and then, great, yeah, I went faster because we know what this was, we've dealt this before, I can right. take care of myself, but I mean, we still would probably see someone for this, what, on average, around six visits, depending on the complexity or the severity, yes. you know, anywhere from probably four to 10 visits uh, over a span of six to at most 12 weeks, depending on their healing rate. Uh, yeah, like you said, we're not just, getting people out of pain, but showing them how to prevent it from coming back Correct. at the same time. So that's yeah. along that whole spectrum. Yeah, and so speaking of, for the, the simplistic way of me keeping this away is taking care of myself. So we call this spinal brushing and flossing we'll do now. And so mm -hmm. the way we describe this is, uh, is the bank account analogy, right? So we, pretend your body, your posture has a bank account. We have withdrawals and deposits. Based on our postures and positions, we tend to do a lot of bending, sitting, looking down. So we tend to make a lot of withdrawals out of our account, which then we get low on funds. So bending over to pick up something off the ground or putting is not inherently bad, but I was already really low on funds. And how did I know that? I was super stiff that morning, yeah. but I kind of ignored it. I was being an idiot. I'm human, right? It happens. And when it happened, I'm like, oh, I knew exactly why. Yeah. Overdraft fee. But I was like, really, just the bend over? So yeah. that proved to me again, like, I have to stay on top of this stuff and I have to take care of it. Even when I'm feeling okay, I can't ignore it. Right. Um, so uh, because we tend to you know, make withdrawals out of our account, we want to make specific deposits to balance. Them. So at very least, what I want to do is a couple times a day, rip out a set of 10 of these. All right now we're not sitting throughout the day but so for desk workers the better strategy is really every time you either get out of your chair or get in just make it a habit to do a couple of these when you change positions yeah, and then and get up more often one, at least once an hour you know try to go to the bathroom get a drink yeah. whatever it may be just yeah. just to keep the joints loose throughout the middle speaking of, of which drink more water hydration is good and yep. it makes you get up you have to go pee more often, right? right. So that's a nice little strategy. That's so right. move more, move often, mm -hmm. use your, make your deposits, stay in balance. If you start to feel like things are getting stiff again, so in my mind in the morning, if I'm like, man, things are off, that should be a clue to me to say, hey, you're low on funds. You need to make some deposits before you start doing some stuff because otherwise a small withdrawal could right. set you off like what happened to me a week ago. Yep. Cool. All right, so that's, that's it. I hope you guys, I mean, this is a, I think, in my opinion, the very simple way of how we assess and how we can keep things simple, but they're specific. And it depends on the person and their individual case of how we go about it. Yeah. So people, I was called, uh, I don't know, patient Arch J because I always get arches, right? Well, here's the thing. We start with that typically because that's the most common problem. Vegas odds, most people have flexion-based injuries, so we're doing back bends. Right. But how they progress and how we change it up and, and different things we do in the office will change depending on the person. Right, it's always individual to whatever we're looking at that day or whoever we're 
meeting that. Yeah, day, you know, right. So if you have a, if you have any problem at all, if it's severe, go see a clinician, specifically you know MDT certified clinician or McKenzie method. You can look it up online. Uh, we're both credentialed. You can come here if you're in the Plymouth or Detroit area or anywhere else surrounding. Come see us. Um, but you can do this with any sort of aches or pains. Is collect some tests, so something that's not normal and hurts. Mm -hmm. Do some sort of strategy and then recheck re it and, and measure change, right? And so pain is okay, but we need to make sure pain's not getting worse with our activities. We need to be aware of how it's changing, what we're doing to change it. And just by understanding that, it can help you a crap ton. And then we can help you understand that so that you have the tools you need to do to, to, uh, to take care of yourself. And I think that's probably the biggest benefit or value you get from visiting us. Absolutely. Well put. I couldn't. Couldn't put a better cherry on top. Thank you. All right. We'll give, we, um, before we go, make sure you uh, like this. Subscribe. If you haven't already subscribed, hit the bell on YouTube so you Where can get, and let's call it right here. We'll okay. hit the bell on YouTube so that way um, you get notifications when we put out new content. And please comment. Let us know what you thought about this video and then ideas for future content because we will quite literally make whatever you suggest.